Is it possible that this is the cause of all my problems with the GoPro? Hey guys and welcome to another action camera video. Lord knows I'm tired of talking about action cameras but they are uh, kind of an essential part of what I do and if I happen to find some new little trick or workaround that works for me I'd like to share it with you guys you know even on the off chance that it helps just one of you guys you know it's worth it. So how can the battery be the problem with the GoPro? Well, so we have the GoPro Hero 10 Black here. Now I have mentioned a few times in the past that if you use this camera just like this, with no media mode, nothing attached to it, use it till the battery goes flat. When it's flat, you pop it out and chuck another one in there. And then of course, you know, you have a whole bunch of these batteries that you charge up in an external charger. You're probably not gonna have too many issues with the GoPro. Thing is, when you're on a motorcycle with a lot of wind noise blowing through your helmet, you kind of need the media mod, right? Or a microphone adapter. That's when things get a little bit complicated. With the GoPro 9 and 10, when your camera's in the media mod, you have to fold out these little feet to mount the camera. So because I'm using a, a metal extension here on my mount unfortunately using the regular gopro thumb screws doesn't work so i have to actually bolt it up tight with an eight millimeter socket that's not going to be the case for everybody but um, just an, as ex an example even if you were just using a thumb screw so what i'm trying to demonstrate is how difficult it is to change out the battery when you're using the media mod to get good audio so for me in my example you know when my battery goes flat i'm on the bike i gotta stop take my helmet off unplug the microphone from the camera take you know remove the whole lot from the helmet then i need to undo the bolt here because you can't get to the battery without removing the media mod so i'd have to get a tool out as i said even if you're just undoing a thumb screw it's still it's still a pain in the butt okay so you remove that and it, you know you can take the mount off fold down the feet open up the side remove the camera from the media mod and we can access the battery then you've got to put it all back together it's a pain in the ass, trust me. So what are the other options? I mean, surely there's some other way around it. Well, yeah, there is. Um, what we have used in the past, um, as some of you guys will know, is a magnetic charge cord attached to the bike's power. So you have a USB power cord, you have a little magnetic plug plugged into the camera somewhere, power cord connects to it. You know, you've got all day power there, you're charging the battery as you ride. Um, the only trouble with that is the GoPro does not like running like that with the battery inside it. And through my testing, I found that it's not uh, anything to do with the media mod or a mic adapter or anything like that. The media mod does add heat. Um, obviously, heat can't escape out of the camera as well as without having it on there. But I've been using the GoPro without the media mod just around the house, uh, just filming stuff in 1080p. The camera gets hot. Um, I'll upload the footage onto my computer and then I have the camera charging and it'll just freeze up just you know it's not even turned on but it won't charge because it's odd because it's too hot or it's just jammed or whatever anyway that kind of leads me to think that this is a big problem with the GoPro so yeah and it's the same way uh, charging it off the bike it just yeah I don't know if it's heat or what but it, it just it'll just freeze up while you're trying to charge it even if the camera's not running so we have constant jam ups and you've got to hold that power button down to get it working again it can be a real pain in the butt i've talked about it on numerous occasions before um, i have found a solution that i've tested on two or three rides now uh, and it's not going to be for everybody but it's working pretty well for me so as i said i thought it was worth sharing um, it's not anything new by any means people have been doing it for a while but uh, there's a few little tricks to it now the solution that i'm using is a power bank okay and by far the easiest way to to power the gopro with a power bank is to mount it to the helmet if you've got it in a pocket or whatever you're still going to have a cord running to your helmet that you have to remember to unplug when you take your helmet off same with with it attached to the bike or whatever and essentially what i'm doing is removing the battery from the gopro and just using the power bank so 
it doesn't have to charge this it just runs purely off the power bank that seems to make the gopro stable i haven't had any crashes or lockups using it this way yet so there's a few uh, little niggly issues to overcome with putting a power bank on your helmet obviously there's a bit of weight there this one this is a signet 10,000 milliamp hour power bank and it weighs around about 250 grams so that's a significant bit of weight to be adding to your helmet fortunately the gopro's got a little bit of chunk to it too so having the gopro on the front and this on the back actually sort of balances it out a bit and it doesn't i don't notice it too much i notice it more when i pick the helmet up and i'm like geez that feels heavy but wearing it it's not too bad especially with the nishua carbon fiber and it's actually a quite quite a light helmet to start with um, but it's not once you start adding all the all the crap onto it but that's you know that's the part of being a youtuber you can't complain about it too much so firstly mounting it to the helmet uh, i've got one of the gopro mounts on here this is a customized sort of mount it's it's a bit complicated to go into but we've got double-sided tape here and a couple of j mounts um, that have been modified a little bit but it does work and it keeps the power bank nice and close to the helmet so you really don't want it hanging out too much just clips on like so you know it ain't all about looking cool when you're uh, behind the camera it doesn't really matter but yeah that's that's the mounting situation and then obviously we've got a usb plug at the bottom here for the camera which runs along side and to the front and we've also got the microphone plug there all right so the camera mounted on the front we can plug in the usb power okay power bank is on but what you'll notice happens after a few seconds power bank turns off that was another problem that i had to overcome okay so camera won't work now because power bank has detected no draw on it um, and it's gone to sleep essentially to save its own power one way to overcome that is there's a button i think most of these sort of power banks have a button on the side you can wake it up by pressing that and then if you hit record on the camera before it turns off again it'll keep running as long as the camera is recording not ideal ideally you want this to stay on the whole time you're using the camera so it is possible to keep these power banks on by adding a, a small load of power to it so this one does have two usb ports on it um, i've just made up a little dongle thing here that uh, has some resistors in it and it'll draw power just enough power to keep this awake with the camera plugged into it as well so yeah guys this is not a perfect solution but it works and it works well enough for me the dongle itself okay is easy enough to make i can't tell you exactly what you'll need yourself it all depends i've got two uh, power banks they are the same brand but they're two different generations this one's a little bit newer the older one actually takes less power draw to stay awake than this one. This one I had to add a couple of more resistors. So basically, I just got an old USB charge cord, cut the plug off. Um, so it's just a standard USB-A plug and you have a little bit of wire hanging out. Um, you want to get the red and black wires normally. Um, they're the power wires. And if you know what you're doing with this sort of stuff, uh, you want to solder some resistors uh, in line there. As I said, how, however many you need is going to depend on your power bank um, if you want to do it this way. As I said, it's not a great solution, but I'm just putting it out there for anyone that wants to, to do this sort of thing. The resistors I've used, I'll put links to this stuff in the description. Um, the resistors are really cheap off eBay. Uh, I've actually got three 150 ohm quarter watt resistors in there and another one that was... There's actually more ohms, I can't remember exactly what it was, but you'll probably just want to play around with um, whatever you can get your hands on. I'd start with 150 ohms, start with one, if that doesn't work go to two, three, maybe four maximum. The 
they do get warm in here. I've put some heat shrink tubing over these and just zip tied it all together into a nice compact little unit. You know, it's dodgy as hell, but it works. It keeps this thing awake. So yeah, do, definitely don't go lower than 150 ohms on the resistors. If you go to a, a you know 100 or below, you're starting to sail right on the edge of um, how many watts they can handle when you're running five volts through them. They're going to get really hot. But the next question is, how much power does it draw? Is it going to drain your power bank really quick? Not really. I did a bit of testing with this 10,000. Uh, milliamp hour battery uh, power bank and over seven hours of being powered on with uh, with my little dongly thing it lost 10 percent of its power so seven hours so you, you over a riding day a typical riding day seven eight hours you're probably going to lose 10 to 15 percent of that capacity just through this now the other question is how long can you record with the gopro uh, with this with the settings that I run on the GoPro, that's running 1080 60 with HyperSmooth on, I can get about one hour recording out of 20% of the power bank. So that equates to about five hours of recording from this power bank. Um, that's, that does me for a day, no worries at all. For a day's riding, if I wanted to, I could carry a spare one of these to plug straight in. As you can see, it's, it's easier to change out than fluffing around with that media mode and trying to get a, a GoPro battery out of that thing every 60 minutes or whatever they last. So um, for me, it's a pretty good solution so far. Obviously, it's not waterproof or anything. If it starts raining or whatever, you're going to have to quickly take all this stuff off. But then the GoPro with the media mode is not waterproof anyway. And the best part is it hasn't crashed yet, not once. And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that it doesn't get so hot because, you know, the battery is one thing that generates a lot of heat inside the GoPro body. So once you remove that, you've just got an open air space inside the camera. It keeps the camera a little bit cooler. So uh, it does help with, with that, any freezing up issues anyway. So yeah, there you have it guys. <laughs> Dodgy little dongle. Uh, and these, you know, resistors are cheap. If you've got an old charge cord laying around that you don't use, chop it up you'll need a soldering iron and some heat shrink but you know the resistors you know you'll want to solder them all in parallel um, so they draw more current um, I don't think they'll work soldered in series but um, I'm not too sure about that I'm not an electronics whiz but uh, yeah that's that's my new uh, filming setup <laughs> it works so you get you know all day recording and I'll tell you what, it's actually pretty good not being tethered to the bike with this charge cord anymore. That's another big bonus of it. A bit more weight on the helmet, but yeah, free freedom to jump off the bike whenever and there's no cord hanging down and, and uh, all that jazz. So, so yeah, that's the, uh, the method that um, I'm going to be using for a while until something goes wrong with that. Anyway, <laughs> anyway I think that's about it, guys. Uh, hopefully... This has helped somebody out there. It's not going to be uh, for everybody, this scenario, but um, if you want to run the, the media mod and have all day power without changing out batteries, it's uh, definitely one option that you should consider. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I know not everybody's interested in this topic. Hopefully, this is going to be the last action camera discussion video for quite some time. Hopefully, this is going to work for me for a while. I don't see why it won't, but um, you just never know. Anyway, thanks again, guys. See you on the next one. Cheers. Uh, one other thing, guys. The current firmware, as of the time of recording this, for the GoPro 10 is version 1.30. Don't upgrade to that one. If you're running 1.20, that's, that's the good one. I heard reports that 1.30 firmware was causing the camera to not want to run off external power. A lot of... Uh, power banks and stuff were saying yeah, we're giving a not enough power error and shutting down um, stupidly I went ahead and upgraded to it anyway and yes of course it was true it wouldn't run off exter external power so I had to go back to 1.20 firmware the only one I could find was the GoPro Labs firmware 
Uh, I'm not sure if you can still get it, but I'll actually put that firmware file on our website for you to download if you need it. It seems pretty stable to me. And what's actually good about the GoPro Labs firmware is it has a whole bunch of hidden little tricks that you can do. And one of them is to set the time on your GoPro by scanning a QR code. Now, that's really handy when you're doing uh, this power bank method. Uh, because obviously when the camera doesn't have a battery inside it, it can't keep the time. So uh, if you leave it for 24 hours or more without you know, any power, it will lose the time. But you can easily set it with the, with the GoPro Labs firmware. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So I just have a shortcut on my home screen of my phone. Uh, it's a link to this page, which is an animated QR code, which has the current time. So I just load that up. You know when I want to set the time on the camera so then I turn the camera on um, it doesn't have the time saved there we go time is time and dates now set without having to do it manually so yeah that's uh, one one good feature of the uh, GoPro labs firmware anyway I'm out of here stop it